if we were to go back in time, uh, there was a distribution originally known as Lindos, which was a Linux-based uh, OS that at its time was pretty popular and the aim was to make Linux more accessible to the home user in particular. As time went forward, the, the name of course caused controversy between how close it sound, sounded to Windows. So after a, uh, some money was exchanged between Microsoft and the folks that did uh, Lindos, they renamed the OS to Linspire. And of course, Linspire had two editions, Linspire, which is paid edition, and the free version, Freespire. And these OSs disappeared in time until PC Open Systems went ahead and a couple of years ago went and bought uh, the Linspire, Freespire, and even the Xandros uh, names. And what we're going to look, be looking at today is actually the new uh, version of Linspire. That's right, Linspire 14, which is based on Ubuntu 2204 and uses GNOME 42, Linux kernel 6.2, and uh, has flat packs enabled, uh, multimedia software out the box, etc. Now, I'm not too sure what it's going to cost when it's released. Um, Okay, I lie. It's actually going to cost, once it comes out, $30 for a self-download uh, edition. And uh, that's for self-support. So, self-support licenses and, of course, additional cost if you want uh, a license that entitles you to support from the PC Open Systems LS LLC. So, I'm going to... Look at Linspire today, and it's still the beta, so I believe it's free for now. So let's take a look and try to install it. So let's install Linspire. And the, the ever old Linspire branding uh, at the bottom. Okay, we come to the Linspire desktop. Uh, we can try to install it. Let's first install it. I'll install the third party stuff as well. Raise the disk and install. Continue. LA is fine. Gosh, inspire WM. Require my details to log in. And welcome to Linspire, a leading commercial open source desktop environment. Uh, say goodbye to searching for new software, uh, design for entertainment. And you can definitely see they have uh, taken the Ubuntu installer, including the slideshow, and uh, updated it as well. Here, of course, they're talking about Google Chrome, only offers desktop editors and uh, settings and of course where you can get help and support so remember it comes with 12 months of support and also uh, their forums as well so you guessed it i'm not going to bore you by you having to watch this thing install i'll be back once it's finished installing okay so restart now and log in that was quick must admit, out of all the Ubuntu distros I've recently tested, or oh, Ubuntu bases, has definitely been one of the quickest to install. Uh, here we go, activities, so let's uh, go to settings. And here immediately, Inspire, GNOME 42.9, 64-bit, Wayland. And what I want to do is just fix my appearance, or fix the appearance, I'm going to put it on dark. Okay, so I'm going to put on dark and display, so I'm just going to fix the resolution. Apply that, keep the changes. And here we go. So, just normal uh, wallpapers going on here. Okay, so here we have Linspire. 
out of the box, which of course is based on Ubuntu 2204, and they really haven't customized too much, but they've done a couple of uh, sane defaults as well as so a couple of sane uh, extensions for no. So of course here the normal file manager, and thankfully they've gotten the three uh, minimize, maximize, and exit buttons uh, by default on GNOME here. And of course uh, the dock. So out of the box, what do we have? We have weather, Blina Etcher to make your own uh, USB flash drives, calendar, firewall config, image magic, system monitor, and resource wise 1.1 gigs, uh, lowish CPU usage, and used about 13 gigs of storage space. Uh, carrying on, they have Midnight Commander as well, which is a uh, file manager for the command line. Really all, all popular, been around for many years, but really popular file manager. Uh, they have Steam pre-installed, which is pretty cool here, a system profile and benchmarker, color paint, uh, the move on package manager, package manager as well from KDE. And if I was to go to settings here, you'll see what backends we've got. So we've got uh, the Linux vendor firmware service, so the new firmware comes out for your machine. Uh, we, they have also got a flat packs enabled here. And let's I was to go look for an application. Uh, I'm just kind of browsing around here randomly. So let's say FileZilla and install it. We could uh, enable the FlatHub uh, store as well. So something to keep in mind, but great to see flat packs are enabled. Um, the technology. Okay, settings, only Office Desktop Editor. Makes sense in a way for only Office Desktop. Uh, if you're trying to woo uh, users from Microsoft Office or Windows uh, side, uh, you would, uh, only Office is a good option with the way how it looks, uh, similar to Microsoft Office. I'm just going to close that up. Uh, at default browser, Microsoft Edge. I had my own weird thoughts on why they would use Microsoft Edge. And Microsoft Edge isn't the world's worst web browser, contrary to popular belief. And also, again, I suppose, if you want to have familiarity for users um, coming from a Windows background, uh, at some point, Microsoft Edge, uh, it, it makes sense for, for users to, to recognize it. Um, although I think these days, uh, Google Chrome is probably more recognizable. Uh, here, of course, is GNOME Tweaks, which they've gone and uh, installed. And of course here, just a document viewer, disk usage analyzer, no disks, etc. And Rimnia for a remote desktop. So really, really great here. So checking on the console side, if I do your name dash A, you'll see uh, is based on Ubuntu 22.04 using a newer kernel 6.2 and there's still updates available and you know what this uh to be very honest with you i went in to this uh, review with preconceived notions because of the old glimspire now i know some people got on and how much they hate the old glimspire but Unfortunately, or fortunately, back in the day, there was some good that came out of Linspire, uh, especially when it came to making app stores a lot more accessible. Yes, so there were some weird things that were done with the old Linspire and the previous owners, but at the end, it, it at least got the name of Linux into the media. And I have to admit, now seeing the name back again, I really think the current owners are doing a good job with it. You know, a lot of the stuff here is they're using Ubuntu and they have really tried to make it a bit more user-friendly, try to put in, change some of the applications that's offered out the box and you could argue they could do one or two more extensions. But I think 
basically if you're going for an Ubuntu LTS based OS and you're adding a newer kernel onto it and you are taking out snaps and you're adding in flat packs and adding in some reasonable software selections I'm really impressed with this uh, distro I've actually previously tried it out as well before today's uh, review on it and I found it extremely stable even if it is a beta and if I wasn't going to buy it uh, you know to support the company I'd at least try free spy which is practically the same thing and uh, also made by the same company and it's really awesome and right now I've got to be honest with you if I was recommending this between this or Zorin or something I would choose this uh, I think it's great um, it's nice to see the name back and I really hope that as years to come they'll continue developing it I did read on the website that in future they're not too sure if they're still going to use Ubuntu as a base or move it I hope if they change bases they'll use something like Debian but it's up to them Folks, as always, I'm going to say thank you for watching. As always, leave your comments below. Bye for now.